Hey, what's up, everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm gonna be showing you how to import an Adobe Illustrator file into Adobe Premiere Pro. This is important because Adobe Illustrator is something called vector-based graphics. And that just means that it uses mathematical formulas and the like to create the objects. And what does this do? Well, it actually allows us to create objects that scale over time or that scale up and they don't blur. They actually stay crisp. So if you see, Premiere Pro actually just recently added this to its own graphics. So if I just drag out a graphics layer right here and zoom this in, you'll notice that the edges are still really, really crisp right here. And that is what the vector graphics does. However, Premiere Pro does not have the tools or the sort of the ability to, to create as Adobe Illustrator does. So you can create really, really complex things in Illustrator, but need them to come into Premiere Pro to edit and sort of animate. And so that's what I'm gonna be showing you how to do is to take this and then bring it into Premiere Pro. We're gonna be going over two different techniques. One of them is to actually export it and then bring it in. And the other one is going to be to actually go over to After Effects for a little while to bring it into Premiere Pro. So let's go over the first way to do it. If we want to get this image into Premiere Pro and be able to work with it so it has those sort of vector-like qualities, then what we can do is we, so we can sort of cheat the system just a little bit. And to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create whatever we want to. So in this situation, it's this circle. And I'm going to go up to File, Export, and then Export for Screens. This is important because it'll allow us to go into this scale format down here. Now, if we drop this down, we can go up to four times, we can go to 1.5, half, or whatever we want. But what we wanna do is we wanna go to either height or width. And we want to click on one of those. I'm gonna go with height in this situation. I'm gonna say that I want it to scale up to 5,000 pixels. So that means it's going to now export this right here as a, a rastered image, which is the pixels, uh, which is how Premiere Pro does it. Except what we're doing is we're just creating an extremely large image. This allows Premiere Pro to just basically scale it up to really, really large dimensions without blurring because it's just so large that there's so much data there. So in this situation, I'm just gonna choose 5,000 pixels. It's a really big number, and if you're working with 1080p, it's gonna be fine. If you're working with like a 4K, then you might even wanna go up to like 10,000 pixels to make sure that no matter what you do, this thing isn't going to blur. So let's go ahead and just do that. I'm gonna go with 10,000 pixels right here, and then I'm gonna hit Export Artboard. It's gonna say, what do you wanna do? And in this situation, I've already done this as a practice, so I'm just gonna say, yeah, I wanna go ahead and uh, put, replace that one. And right here is where it's gonna export to, so if you want it to export to somewhere different, click on that button, choose somewhere else. I'm gonna hit Replace right there. It's gonna work for a second, and the bigger the image, sort of the longer this is gonna take and then you'll see that it'll actually pop up with our folder and then our artboard here. If we right click this and go to properties, you'll notice that we have in the details, it is 10,000 by 10,000 pixels. That's because the original was 500 by 500. So it just kept the original aspect ratio. One edge went to 10,000, so it brought the other edge to 10,000. And you'll also know that the size actually got pretty big, 548 kilobytes for just the circle. So you might get some larger files, but the end quality will be good. So that's perfectly fine. Now we go back into Premiere Pro, we right click, we hit assets right here, and then we're gonna go ahead and just open that up. Now that we have it open, we can drag it in, and you'll notice that this comes into here that it is actually going to scale down because I actually have a default setting so that it scales, but a lot of people, it'll actually come in at 100%, so it's just gonna be huge. Just go ahead and take that image and bring it scale down so that it fits, and you'll notice that wherever we put it, it's going to maintain that crisp edge around the sides because again, it's just such a large file that it's not going to lose any of that quality when you downscale it to the proper place. And so now we can do whatever we want. We can animate this, we can move it around and it's going to maintain those crisp edges. So then part two is if you don't really understand the size of it and you kind of want it to, to act like a vector image until the time you actually render the video out, in that case, what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and send the project to After Effects where you wanna add that vector image in. So let's say we wanna add it in right here. We click on it, we right click, and we're going to hit replace with After Effects composition. It's going to go ahead and make that change, open up After Effects, and put the file in right here. Now then, what we wanna do is we wanna take the Adobe Illustrator file and we want to import it. So we're gonna to go to import, then file, and then we're just going to import vector test like so. And you'll see that it actually imports the file I've already imported before, so I'm gonna delete that previous one. And you'll notice that the type is vector art. So with vector art, we actually get the ability to continually rasterize. And what that means is that whenever we scale this, it's going to keep 
rasterizing it and it'll never allow it to become pixelated. Even if we brought this up to a billion pixels by a billion pixels, there would still be crisp lines. To show that off, let's go ahead and the scale button right here, and we're gonna scale it up. And you'll notice that at the beginning, we do actually have blurred lines here. This is what it would look like in the other one if we didn't export it really, really large. So in that case, we're going to go down here to toggle switches to make sure that we're on this set right here so that we have these three and then these buttons. And we're gonna click this one in the middle right here. This is the continual rasterization. And you'll notice that now we have that every time we move this, it's going to rasterize it and you'll see that we get this crisp line. And like I said, I can bring this up to really whatever I want. And then like, let me just go to the position here and try to drag it over. And you'll notice that there's still those crisp lines right there. The neat part about bringing it into After Effects is if I go in here and I click on this and let's say that I wanna change its color to like something like a red outline and then um, green. If I hit Control Save, so uh, or Control S to save it, file, save as well, it's going to save over that vector test.ai. That means that if I come into AE, you'll notice that it updates the change. So if you're thinking that you're gonna be changing the Adobe Illustrator file constantly, then bringing it into After Effects is a smarter option because now whenever we're in Premiere Pro, we can just re-click that Control S button over here whenever we make a change. Uh, let's go the brown this time, save it. And you'll notice that it actually is going to change over here as well. It'll take a little while. You might want to come into here to let it propagate and then come over here to let that propagate. But in the end, it'll change over here as well. So that's two different ways to import a file from Adobe Illustrator uh, so that you can keep that, that really crisp edges and the, the high definition animation that you want to keep. Thanks everyone for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and throw them in the comment section below on our website at adobemasters.net. If you want to see more videos similar to this one, go ahead and that subscribe button and make a video every other day on Adobe-related products. And until next time, guys, see ya.